In this video, we're going to see the signs of nmap scans in a packet capture. In the next video, we'll take more of a deeper dive and actually look at those signs in a live packet capture in my lab. If you enjoy this video content and would like to see more, please hit subscribe. And if you want notifications when the videos come out, hit the bell button. Now, let's get on to the video. You come into work one day and find a cryptic email in your inbox. It's from a member of your cybersecurity team. The email says, hey, take a look at these three packet captures. Figure out how to find nmap scans in a larger capture so you can help us out. Our port scanning detection is not working and it's overwhelming us with alerts. We have to turn it off until we can upgrade it. Something big is coming our way. You think to yourself, off? This is not a good idea, but it's not your call to make and you want to help out. So let's take a look at these in-map scans and see how we can identify them versus user behavior. Something tells you that this is a skill that you're going to need really soon. The first scan they sent is a default in-map scan the top 1,000 ports of one IP address. The things that we are noticing here will show us that this is an nmap scan or a hacker and not just a user acting like a user. Number one, the first thing we see here is a ping and two packets after that ping, there's an ICMP timestamp request. So the good thing here is that we can filter by the ICMP timestamp request by typing ICMP.type equals 13. This ICMP timestamp request is going to be a really good indicator of an nmap scan. The second thing that we notice here is that there are a lot of send packets reusing the same source or ephemeral port number 58708. Now, it's not the fact that it's a particular number, 58708, it's that we see 58708 over and over again because nmap is reusing it to talk to many ports on this host. What we normally see is a host using many source ports, one for each conversation, not using the same one over and over. Look at these two examples. They both show normal behavior of using many source ports. So let's filter by this TCP source 58708. We notice that our total displayed packets is 1000, which makes sense since we're scanning the top 1000 ports. If we look at the time column from packet one to packet 2004, the total time is 0.21 seconds. Now this is the default T3 speed in nmap, but this speed is not normal user behavior, it's hacker behavior. And that brings us to our third sign, time. The time period is so small, in this case, a thousand send packets on a thousand ports, all from one IP to a server in one fifth of a second. For comparison, a normal user application might hit one, five, or maybe even 10 ports in a minute, but not a thousand in a fraction of a second. It can only be a port scan. So let's change the filter again to tcp.flags.sin equals true and tcp.flags.ac equals true. These are the SYNAC packets, replies of open ports on the hosts being scanned. Let's also notice here the red and black packets below these open ports. These are retransmissions from our scanned host. It just keeps on trying to complete the three-way handshake with the nmap scanner. It's looking for an ACK back from nmap, but nmap doesn't send it. And this is our fourth sign, SYNAC retransmissions. The scanned host wants to complete the three-way handshake, but nmap just ignores it. This is the second scan your cybersecurity team sent. It looks like a whole subnet scan, so let's take a look at it. One difference here is that the scanner and the host being scanned are on the same subnet. This scan starts with a lot of ARP requests, Kind of like our first scan did with the pings. Nmap is using the ARP requests here on the local subnet instead of pings because you're more likely to get a response. Since ARP is a layer two protocol, it's not likely that a firewall would be on a machine that would keep it from responding to ARPs. As you can see, these ARP requests start at one and go to 254. And all of these ARP requests are coming from one IP address. It's 192.168.1.158. So this is our number one sign again. Many pings or ARP requests from one IP, possibly targeting all hosts in a range or subnet sequentially. Look at the time period for all of these ARPs. Packet 530 is the last ARP in this scan, so 255 IP addresses in 3.4 seconds. So these ARPs hit our number three sign also. A very small time period. Over 200 IP addresses in three seconds is too fast to be normal user behavior. Seeing all of the sequential ARP requests confirms that 192.168.1.158 is doing the scanning, but let's get rid of the ARPs by using the filter not ARP to see what else is going on. The first thing I do is look at the source and destination ports. I see a lot of TCP port 47199. So let's add a filter of tcp.port equals 47199. 
If we look at the total packets displayed at the bottom of the screen, it's about 17,000 packets. This checks the box for our number two sign again, source port reuse. Many send packets from one IP that reuse the same source port, targeting many ports and or many IPs. Our fifth sign of port scanning is a single IP address going to the same destination port on multiple hosts. Let's zoom in on this number five sign with a few filters. TCP.DST port equals 80, which is HTTP. We can see that 192.168.1.158 is going to port 80 on all of these hosts. Now let's guess a few common ports that are likely hacker targets, such as TCP.DST port equals 21, which is FTP, same thing. 192.168.1.158 is going to port 21 on a lot of hosts. Let's try TCP.DST port equals 3389, remote desktop. Same thing. So now once more here, let's try TCP.DST port equals 25, which is SMTP. Again, same thing. So is a normal user going to go to port 21, port 3389, port 8080, and port 25 on nine hosts in 10 seconds? Nope, they are absolutely not going to. This is port scanning. This is a hacker. Now let's back out our scan just a little bit to tcp.port equals 25 so that we can also see the replies to all the send traffic. And I see a lot of TCP resets, which are the red packets here. This is our sixth sign, lots of TCP resets. So let's look at the screen and describe what's happening. 192.168.1.158 is trying to hit port 25 on nine different hosts using source port 47199. And each of these hosts are saying with their TCP resets, that port is not open. So ask yourself, why would a user try to hit nine mail servers that are not there? Answer, they wouldn't. This is hacker behavior. Let's take a look now at the third scan that they sent us. This one is a scan of a remote slash 24 subnet, all 254 IP addresses, and all 65,535 TCP ports. First, notice that a remote subnet scan starts with pings. We see the pattern of pings that are just counting up through the 192.168.2.0 subnet. This again is our first sign of port scanning. Many pings are ARPs and ICMP timestamp requests. And even more specifically, we're going to see a lot of ICMP not found packets. Again, we can add a filter to see these pings without responses. And the way we do that is we type in icmp.resp underscore not underscore found. This will show all of our pings that do not have a corresponding response in this packet capture. We can also find all of those ICMP timestamp requests by using a filter icmp.type equals 13. This will show us only ICMP timestamp requests. Let's simplify our view and get rid of the ping packets using the filter not ICMP. We see source port 51305 and 51307 from 192.168.1.158 sending send packets to port 443 on a bunch of hosts on the 192.168.2.0 network. And once more, this shows us our sign number two, source port reuse. Many send packets from one IP that reuse the same source port target many ports and or many IPs. At around packet 1526, the send packets change to ACK packets for port 80. This is an ACK scan. We can find these packets too. tcp.flags.ack equals true and tcp.completeness.sendAck equals false. This will show us all of the ACK packets that don't have a full three-way handshake. At around packet 2043, we start seeing our same host scanning with port 51561 as the source port. Again, normal users and hosts don't use the same source port like that. And let's look at the ports that are being scanned. This is where experience helps, or you can jumpstart your experience by starting or continuing to learn common ports. Some of you that have been doing this for a while know these well. Ports like 8080, 22, 5900, 3306, or 1720. This is just part of a list of common TCP ports. It will make troubleshooting with Wireshark so much easier because you can see a port like 21 and know that somebody's trying to use FTP, or a port like 3389 and know that somebody's trying to connect remote desktop. Okay, I think that guy's using remote desktop and working, but there's just no way to be sure. But let's filter on just one of the IPs being scanned. We'll set our filter to ip.addr equals equals 192.168.2.3. The first thing I see on the screen is that there are a lot of TCP resets. That's a lot of the host saying, this port is not open. That hits our number six sign again. Lots of TCP resets directed at a single IP. Another thing I notice is that these are all small packets. Let's grab this filter and go to statistics and packet links. 
Then we'll add the filter to the display filter text box and hit apply. We can see 100% of the packet links fall between 40 bytes and 79 bytes. There's just no room for data in these packets. They're too small, which makes sense because most of what Nmap does in a basic port scan is replicating parts of the three-way handshake, and there's no data involved there. If we start at packet 2043, we see that the port being scanned is TCP8080 with the send packet. Then in packet 2048, the host being scanned responds with a reset ACK, so this port is closed. If you look over on the left side, there is a line that will point you from the original packet to the response of that packet. In packet 2045, TCP110 is being scanned, and in packet 2049, the TCP reset says that it's closed. Really, we start to see that most of the traffic is SIN, then reset ACK, over and over. From the top to the bottom of this scan, we have 131,118 packets sent in 85 seconds. Now, if we change our filter and add tcp.flags.sin equals true, that's still... 65,583 send packets. This can only be scanning when you have one IP sending this many send packets to this many hosts in this short of time. One last thing on this scan. Let's see which ports were actually open on our 192.168.2.3 host. We will filter for Synax. To do that, we want to add tcp.flags.ack equals true and tcp.flags.sin equals true and not tcp.analysis.retransmission. Since we have this in-map scan IP, isolated. This filter shows us that only these eight ports were open at the time the scan was done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. That kind of thing really does help out. If you have any videos you would like to see, just leave me a comment and let me know. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.